Today we're gonna talk about 10 of the games we played this past month, but because we respect your time, yeah. and we wanted to challenge ourselves, Absolutely. no other reason. No. Oh. Kenny's calling, one second. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up? Oh, you're, okay, you're gonna be a little early. We only have like 10 minutes. You think we can do something? Sure. All right. All right. See you soon. We wanted to do 10 games in 10 minutes. So count it down. Let's see if we can handle it. <laughs> We're going to go back and forth with these 10 games. Some of them we played together, some of them we haven't. But for the first one, we have, and this is God Tear, which I have Where's somewhere the God -tier? behind me. It's Tear. God dang it. We have played it together, and we want to talk about it. It is God Tear. <laughs> for the first of 10 games we want to talk about, it is God Tear. This is by Steamforged Games, and it is a skirmish miniature game, mm -hmm. but a lighter one than, you know, your kill teams, your 40Ks, your sure. war cry, stuff like that. Still bored. <laughs> yeah, still bored. Still like cards that have the skills of your characters other mm -hmm. than you having to read out of a freaking magazine. Very streamlined. Yeah. But it's still like deep. I mean, it's mm -hmm. when you, we only played with one faction each, which the game recommends you start that way, but then move to two and then move to three for the full experience. Yeah. When you get to three, that's gonna be a lot. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of fun, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be a lot. I love the hero and like the little squads. It reminds me of Heroescape already. Sure. So like I'm it already high high mm -hmm. expectations mm -hmm. for the rest of the game, but yeah. I'm excited to play more. And we are painting the minis and the minis are pretty fun to paint too. Mm -hmm. I mean you're not, but Kenny and I are, and it's gonna it's, it's gonna turn out pretty good. I don't know where we're sitting at a minute wise, but we got ten minutes for this whole thing. So that's God tier very good. What would you rate it at a ten out of ten? What would you rate it? Uh eight out of eight. That was awesome. All right, my first game is Ahoy, which is another game that we played together. That's right, we did. Right here. Uh, anyway, you better track it's it. To by, make it follow your movement. It's by Leader Games, and uh, of course, Creators we of love Root, Leader Games. Who yeah, we also, uh, which is our favorite Oath, game of all time, Oath, which you've uh, not played, Vast, which we've which not we've played, played. <laughs> uh, 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 Fort, Fort, which, which we, we have played. played. Pretty good. Uh, but Ahoy is more along the lines of Root, where yes. you have the asymmetric. Players, mm -hmm. really, two of the factions only are uh, vying for control of the map, and the other one is playing a complete other game, like the Vagabond. Yes. in Root. I really like. This. I do too. I think. Yeah. I think that it has a lot of potential. Obviously, mm -hmm. I love Root a lot more, but I think Root, because of expansions, mm -hmm. is better. Agreed. But Agreed. If Ahoy eventually gets those kind of expansions, I think that it could compete. Yeah. I love the pirate theme. I, like, I, there's just a lot to love. About it has it. the benefit of being something that's far more approachable too. Mm -hmm. It's not a game mm -hmm. that you know you're necessarily gonna walk into somebody who's never played a game before and they're gonna take it up easy. Yeah. But it is something that you could conceivably teach someone who is very new to board games. Absolutely. Great game, definitely wanna play it more. I play the Blue Fins and I wanna try every other faction and also try the Blue Fins again because I yeah. think I could do better at it. Yeah. Uh, Ahoy, out of 10. I give it nine. Eight and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I was hoping we'd match again, but nah, we didn't. Yeah, no. Absolutely. Next game on the list is also here, but it's over. Where the heck is it? It is right here. This is the Another game we played together. of Mary King. We played this. This is a Devious Weasel game so designed by Jim Felly, which is the designer of Cosmic Frog, publisher of Cosmic Frog. You know my love for Cosmic Frog doesn't hold up in the mirroring of Mary King. I, Transparency, have playtested this game and, you know, helped, uh, give feedback on some of the uh, mm. the rules and things when I was talking with Jim about it. So I do want to just fully admit that, but I do really, really like this game. It's been a while since I last played it. Yeah. And picking it up took a minute to really grok the rules. And then once I remembered how it played, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, you're on like a budget with what you can do every yeah. turn because yeah, yeah, of the yeah. amount of cards you can play. And it's really interesting to see that like level up each day. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to be what it was. And I've never played a game quite like it yeah. before. Well, half of why I love uh, Cosmic Frog and also the mirroring of Mary King is this absolute theme that you would just never see anywhere it's else. It's very original. Yeah. I think it's an incredible game. I actually like it maybe more than Cosmic Frog. I mean, that's unsurprising, as a, as a, yeah. Yeah, as a fan of their games, but yeah, no, great, great game. game. All right. The mirroring of Mary King, out of 10. Eight. Eight. Hey! We're doing so good. Like We're so just, great. You're just waiting through it. I'm going to say it. No, I, okay, okay. I wrote a Patreon <laughs> review. You should check it out if you haven't already. I gave it an eight out of 10. All right. So my number two game is Sobek. Two player, just two. Which uh, I played at Gen Con mm -hmm. with a guy named Drew, who's awesome in, in our Discord. I was like, I'm not named Drew, but I forgot I just taught <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, and cool. then on top of that, I've also played it like four times now on PGA, PG, PGA, yeah, PGA, uh, the, the pro with, golf tour with, with, with Tiger Woods, <laughs> yeah. you know. But it's really, really good. I think uh, the way that it scores kind of reminds me of King Domino a bit. Yep, but the 100%. way that it moves around is just really incredibly unique. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of uh, strategy involved that, I, especially playing against people who are really good at the game, yeah. I'm learning from them. But like. 
I think it's really good. Oh, I agree. Uh, yeah, like King Domino, but you have more control over what your opponent is able to draft from. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of just getting a pool of three after you take yours, mm -hmm. you can move the thing around and you can let that influence your decision of what to take. Yeah. Great game. Out of it, 10? Uh, seven. seven and a half. Slightly better. Next up for me is Isle of Cats Explore and Draw. This is the roll and write for the big box game Isle of Cats with all the beautiful polyomino kittens. You've not played this one. So not it's going to be hard for you to talk about it. So I have a full minute. Let's relax. <laughs> Isle of Cats Explore and Draw is honestly a really good roll and write. I've only played this game one time solo, however, so I do not want to jump into this with too much enthusiasm, but for me, in my use case, I think this replaces the core game for me as someone who does not often get it out because it's a lot. It's mm. a great game, but it's a big box. It's a lot of pieces, mm. um, and this is a very similar feeling. Mm. It also, interestingly enough, because they both have cats in their name, the way you draft your cards is reminiscent of Cat Lady in the sense that you're taking a column really? okay. when you draft a card, but there's like special abilities that allow you to take rows instead okay. or something like that. But in general, really good game. I got absolutely smacked by my sister, the, the CPU in the solo <laughs> mode. It was disgusting. I lost big time out of 10 seven and a half right okay, now okay, right now okay. right now seven and a half room to grow yeah room, room to, to grow, grow. Room my to number grow. three is rebellion who was taught by taught to me by you a know guy what? Named Kenny, Kenny. come over here yeah, yeah, Kenny, yeah. get in the recap i didn't i haven't played this game you want to do a second intro right now hi i'm max <laughs> I'm dueling, and this is table no Anyway, uh, Rebellion. So we have a minute to talk about it, then you have to leave again. Uh, Rebellion, you taught me on a Thursday, and we began the game at, like, what, 10 a.m., right? Yeah, Maybe? Yeah, or so, yeah. Yeah, and we played for, like, two and a half hours, and then we switched sides and played it again. Yeah. And the Empire won both times. Yep. And uh, I had an absolute blast with this game. I yeah. thought it was incredibly you thematic. Stop talking about I can't. This. I really, I really can't. It's it's a it's a cat and mouse game with a ton of awesome like extra mechanics and then also just a lot of flavor from the actual movies. What do you think of this game? I mean, I think all the same thing. It's just been a while <laughs> since I played it, like three, three or so years. So it's a really good reminder of just like how good of a game it is. Like mm. not just like thematically, but just like mechanically too. It's a game, it's a Star Wars game. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, super yeah. Good. yeah. Incredible game. So out of 10, yeah. what would you give it? One, Nine. two, three, Nine. 10. Ooh. I knew it was coming. It's perfect. I it's it's it incredibly great. It, it's amazing. I it's amazing. It Dungeons, Dice, and Danger is the roll and write by Richard Garfield, uh, otherwise known as the creator of Magic the Gathering. This is a roll and write about entering a dungeon. It's very reminiscent in theme of something like Paper Dungeons by Alley Cat Games, of which I also very much enjoy. Um, after one play so far of Dungeons, Dice, and Danger, which I didn't even finish because Ellie was awake and not napping like she should have been, uh, I do prefer <laughs> Paper Dungeons just so far, but I think that has a lot of room to grow once I am able to experience it more. There's four different dungeons, which means you're not playing the same thing Ooh. every single time. Okay, cool. Um, and it's it's very unique in the sense that you're rolling five dice, one black die. You're picking two pairs out of the white dice to make up numbers to cross off in the dungeon. It's not necessarily the most thematic thing in the world because you can cross off, cross off squares on the opposite sides of the dungeon. Mm. And so it's not like thematic in the sense of, hey, you're roaming through a dungeon. Yeah, Whereas yeah, this yeah. one, you take a step and you have to follow your, your pattern, your yeah. path. But even still, really like the looks of it so far, really like the way it plays, excited to get an actual full play in, but that's Dungeon Knights of Danger. If I had to rank it out of 10 after playing it a half a time, I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay, cool. All right, next up for me is Acropolis, mm -hmm. which we both played yes, and also Kenny has played as well. Kenny, uh, you can <laughs> This game you reminds so me a dirty. lot of like Cascadia, but yeah. with a with a city theme, like maybe Acropolis. Uh, oh, okay. oh, wait, no, 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 no. Sprawlopolis. Like That's Acropolis. it. Like Sprawlopolis. The the real like appeal to it, right, is that it goes up, not yes. just side. Yes. Uh, and that's really neat because on top of not only being able to place things on top of other things you place already to really match up at the things that you want, you also get uh, coins mm -hmm. that you can spend when you draft by filling up blank spots on your board. And the so, building up changes the scoring drastically. Absolutely. You score multiplicatively as you yeah, go yeah. up higher. It's essentially like King Domino and Sobek where you're know. having those extra little things. But like, oh, it's so good. It really, it's really, really fun. And there's, it takes a lot of planning. Uh, I, I was very drawn into this game from the very beginning when we, we demoed it because the guy who taught us it smacked us. And I knew yep. that means Bodied there's us. a lot of room to grow yep. in my absolutely. the way I play. But it was a really great game. Out of 10? Out of 10, I would give it a seven nine. and a half. Whoa. I think is good. It is good. I just want to play it more. I don't want to give everything eights pluses, okay? I already picked five games of I this month that I enjoy. Five games I love. Everyone's like, wow, Max is giving everything a seven and a half plus. <laughs> Look, I picked the ones I liked, okay? 
Next on the list for the fifth and final game for Max, it's Memoir 44. We've only played this on Board Game Arena, but we've played it quite a bit with our friend Jeff and Doolin. Of course, we've played it in just two players, as it's only a two player mm -hmm. game unless you move Max to the really uh, I don't agree. They think my roles are disgusting. Uh, I no, did last game I know that he's absolutely crush you 12 I, to 4 mm -hmm. in the last game. I, I think bodied. he's just really good at it. Yeah, it was a great game. Uh, <laughs> any, any, even still, it's a good game about uh, your war kind of thematic things. You're just navigating a battlefield, a hex, hex space grid, and you're rolling a lot of die trying to take down different army pieces. Mm -hmm. I'm not so certain I want a physical game. I do for the dice, mm -hmm. right? But also for the little tiny miniatures, that's going to be a lot to like manage yeah, too. So I'm interested in trying it out. I do want it physically, but it's one that I'm happy to continue playing on Board Game Arena, mm -hmm. even if I get accusations of my hacking the game to, to rig the <laughs> dice in my favor, but I do like it. What do you think? I think it's incredible. It, again, it gives me feelings of God tier or Heroescape, but maybe not quite as at their level, but yeah, it's not still a really, 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 really fun. I love the like the maps that change mm -hmm. every single time. Yeah, you get I your get, own scenario. Yeah, yeah, th mm -hmm. those, are, those are great, and I think this would be a blast to play in person. Yeah, great game. Um, Out of 10? I would give it a seven. seven. Yeah. Nailed it. Fair. Oh, I was going to say, you still have one. Uh, and then my last one is Warp's Edge, which is a solo only game. So sorry, Max, you can leave the video. I'm just kidding. No, say, 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 say. no. anyway, Warp's Edge is a bag building game where uh, you play a spaceship that is trying to, it's almost like Galaga. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The old Atari uh, arcade style game where there is a row of enemies in front of you that you have to defeat before you get to the big boss ahead every so often. The big boss is gonna go through warps, and as soon as you run out of tokens in your bag, you gotta refill all of the enemies and go through them all again. So essentially, you have four tries to go through all of the enemies and take down the boss. You're upgrading your, your tokens throughout the game by fighting all of these uh, extra little minions, and then uh, the boss fights are kind of subpar, but I think that the rest of the game is still a blast to play. There's okay. lots of ships, there's lots of monsters. I would give this a solid, Six and a half out of ten. All right, thanks for watching. And if you want to see us talk about games where we don't have to do it in a very quick time span, here's a video you can click. Thanks.